ladies and gentlemen. Lately, I've seen a lot of content and videos out there asking questions like, is this healer going to be worth playing in the War Within? And those are valid questions for every single healing spec out there. But in this video, I'm going to ask a little bit more general question. Is healing going to be worth it in general in the War Within? And in order to answer this question, we have to consider all the changes to healing that are coming up in the next expansion. So let's get started. Hero talents are the newest addition in the War Within, and although they're amazing and they feel pretty good when we play with them on the beta, you have to consider the fact that in some cases they're adding new buttons to your existing toolkit, but even if they're not, you have to keep in mind that they're adding new interactions between existing abilities, and overall they're definitely going to make your gameplay style a little bit more complicated. So although they look and feel great, you have to consider that they're not going to make your gameplay easier in many cases, quite the contrary, in many cases it's actually going to become a little bit harder. The damage profile in the dungeons is a very hot topic and there was a lot of feedback provided by Blizzard how they didn't want it to be bursty and how they wanted to change the way that healing feels. But I've played all the dungeons in the beta and I don't think it matters how much tuning is going to happen from now until release. People still have all of their defensives, augmentation evoker is a thing, probably going to be meta in the next expansion as well. So the damage in the dungeons is and it's going to remain bursty. People still get hit for huge percentages of their health bars. There are a lot of dots right now that take for like 80% of your health bar. So you're basically dead in two ticks if you don't get healing in between. So from that perspective, things are not changing compared to the last couple of seasons. So expect the same experience, if not worse, but definitely not better in the war within. The most recent tank changes is another topic that you need to consider. Tanks are a little bit less tanky right now, so you actually have to pay attention to them and throw heals every now and then, especially at the start of big pools, which is fine most of the time, but when things go south and heavy AoE damage happens, now you actually have an extra person to worry about. And as I said before in the video talking about the tank changes, these changes would be most welcome if there are changes elsewhere into the dungeon design and the bursty damage profiles. But it seems they've missed the mark on some of them, so if you decide to heal next season, keep in mind that you're going to have additional interactions and layers added to your gameplay when it comes to tank healing. The other big change that keeps happening every patch right now is Blizzard keeps increasing the health bars of people so the healers is required to cast more spells to top somebody off. This time it also came with a buff to the single target healing spells but it seems that the AoE healing spells have been left behind. As a result you have to rely on your single target healing spells much more than before. Just to give you an example, on my shaman my chain heals right now feel like farts as they don't move the health bars enough, so I have to rely on my single target healing spells instead, even in heavy AoE damage. This is something that you need to consider because this is going to change your gameplay style both in Mythic Plus and Raids, which depending on your class could be either a good or a bad thing and it can either make things easier or more difficult. But in any case this changes how healing feels immensely, so you need to keep that in mind as well. I've already mentioned this, but the dungeon design is another huge factor when it comes to healing. Right now many of the dungeon boss encounters feel like raid bosses. Not only they have a lot of burst damage, but on top of that they have a lot of mechanics, sometimes way too many, and if you make one wrong step, you're dead. For instance, the last boss in Mists was the hardest boss of the dungeon even before, but now it has two extra mechanics with a green circle that you need to avoid while he's also sucking you in towards it. Which is a nice example of how things were hard enough before, but now there's even more to deal with which makes the encounter much more difficult in general and of course for healing in particular. 
The trash changed as well, as now seeing something does not prevent it from trying to keep casting the same spell over and over again until it's actually interrupted. And while I think that's a good change in general, right now there are way too many interrupts and stuns to worry about, and if you play primarily in pucks, expect a lot of pain, as many of those things will go through and you just have to heal through them. So that basically shows very well what is their design philosophy for the dungeons right now. I'm definitely not a fan of it, but that's what's happening, so you have to consider this, as it's not going to make your life as a healer easier. So, is it worth it healing at the end in the War Within? That's a question that you have to answer for yourself. But do consider everything that we mentioned so far, because I think every single one of these points that we mentioned is not going to make healing easier, but in many cases it's probably going to make it harder. So, if you decide to play a healer next season, expect a huge challenge, and if you're still in doubt, let me share what is my choice and my strategy. Now, it's a little bit bold to say that this is the best healing strategy, but this is something that I've done for the last couple of seasons, I had a lot of fun and I definitely enjoyed them much more compared to before. At the start of the season, definitely play healer, because you'll be able to fix a lot of the mistakes that will inevitably happen while people are still learning the new dungeons, and that's something that you won't be able to do if you play DPS. Another big advantage is that if you're pugging, you have much easier time getting into keys, which in general is going to allow you to get IO score faster and gear up much easier. Later in the season, you can consider switching to DPS or tank, which would be much easier to do, especially if your healing character has a DPS or tank spec that you enjoy, as at this point, you're already going to have the IO score and the gear to get easy invites into the keys that you want to push. For example, I have both the elemental and the enhancement specs ready on my shaman, in case one of them is bad, as I actually enjoy playing both. And the last couple of seasons, I finished them pushing and playing as DPS. And if you ask me why is this my strategy and why is it good, we all know how stressful healing could be, and how much pressure there is on you to be focused for every single GCD of the run, because you know that if you miss one global, people will die. And sitting there pressing your buttons as hard as you can and squeezing your butt cheeks for the whole 30 or 40 minutes of the dungeon, and doing that for the entire season could very easily lead to a burnout. And if you switch to play DPS, trust me, just try it, it feels like a vacation. I'm carelessly pressing my buttons, enjoying life, maybe throw an interrupt or a stun every now and then, if I have to use a defensive, I know very well when and where to do it as I've played as a healer and I know what hurts at this point, so I am just chilling. You can still go back and heal some keys every now and then, but having this extra option at the end of the season definitely makes it much more enjoyable. So at the end, my advice is, Play a healer, enjoy it as much as you can, but also have your vacation options prepared in case you get too overwhelmed by healing or you just want to try and chill for a key or two. It will give you variety, fresh experience and it will make miracles for increasing the enjoyment of the season and the game in general. So those are my two cents on healing in the War Within, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, now get out of here.